Friends, let us be happy for once. We're all so miserable with all the financial crisis, global warming getting worse and worse and worse, and everything changing. Let's look forward to rebirth. So now let us go to our alchemical adventures, because we transmute evil into good, the unreal into the real. The gateway is seven, the portal of Libra. Outspread wings. To rise to the stars, you need two wings, obviously. We've only got one at the moment, masculine one. In the Temple of Alchemy, the priestess addresses the twin apprentices, Aidan and Elaine. There is hidden within each being a spark of glory that returned to the stars. Many have ascended to the heights and have fallen to the depths, the quest lost. To attain the heavens, we must bring others with us. We need to invoke the holy goddess Mart, judge of souls. The priest alchemist raises star. Divine goddess Mart of the feather of truth, raise us to our true being with your outspread wings. Be with us now. Then we become aware of a woman in flowing pale grey robes, her face covered. The time for the ascent is now. For long humans have attempted spiritual flight to attain the cosmos, and you have fallen. But each fall has brought you wisdom. For you have returned to the Holy Mother Earth, from whom you have been born. The Holy Mother would have you leave her now, bringing with you her seeds of love and beauty and truth. You, the human race, have been appointed guardians of this lovely Earth, but instead you have despoiled it. Greed, selfishness and stupidity have led to planetary disaster. You now need to return to the divine realms of the cosmos, which encompasses every earth, all stars. There, abandoning pride and ambition, you must begin again, this time helped by what you have learned from past experiences of many earthly lives. To fly swiftly, to rise, to extend, to plunge into the depths, you need to have two wings of love and truth. Truth is all-powerful. Love is omnipresent. You will bring harmony, the music of the spheres, to the earth. My feather of good judgment is within yourselves. Peace now from speaks. We give thanks to the goddess Mart for her oracle. The priestess alchemist addresses Elaine. Elaine, you often find yourself overcome by emotions that hinder rather than help those you regard as victims. Are you willing to face the trial of Mart, of the judgment of Osiris, and so learn to help others effectively? (laughs) You can see Elaine looks a bit taken aback. She says, I do feel, yes, I do feel my feelings change with every change of the wind. I see one cause, then it's antidote. I long for good judgment. I will gladly undertake the ordeal, however severe. Priestess Alchemist says, so be it, and hands Elaine a tarot card from the Marseille deck. This is your passport. Describe it, Elaine. It is number seven. Libra, and depicts a crowned warrior seated in a chariot marked SM, Sun and Moon. The two horses drawing his chariot are coloured red, on the right for the sun and blue on the left for the moon. This is Western tradition. I prefer the Egyptian portrayal of the male moon, Khonsu, or the female sun, Sekhmet. However, I get the message. Easy to understand, hard to do, to balance my psychic vision with facts. Peace, (laughs) Tarek. This is smiling. As you know, Words are meaningless without experience. So find the portal of Libra, the temple of the Zodiac. When you're in trance, we shall be with you, but may not help you. And Elaine enters into trance. Try and join her. Elaine, I gladly ascend the holy hill of the temple. I'm always happy within it. So I enter and honor the sacred flame of Vesta, the center. It is not hard to find the portal of Libra. It is next to the fiery entrance of Leo. 
Yes, of course it's different. I feel at home facing the doorway. It is surmounted by a painting of the goddess Mart. Her protecting wings are folded round the doorway. She is like the Roman goddess Astrea, who left her earth when her reign of justice ended. She is to return at the end of the age. So may it be. I draw aside a heavy grey veil and pass through the gateway. I'm in a desert. I feel this is an ancient Egypt. Is it nowadays? I don't like the sound of a plane overhead. There's a smell of burning. I know this is Africa because there's a distant sound of drumming. Or are these bombs? I see before me a shanty town and I know what is there. Huddled families and children go out to get water and may have legs blown off by a landmine. But on my right is a different scene. It's an oasis. I hear the sound of a harp. Some people are moving to and fro, but most are waiting before a mighty granite gateway. What is curious is that between the giant pillars is some other realm of shimmering colours. A stately woman in white approaches me. I cannot understand her language, but I somehow know what she's telling me. I can either go and give practical help to the shanty town, or pass through the gates of the judgment of Osiris, judge of the living and the dead. If I pass the weighing of the heart by the feather of Mark, on scales held by Anubis, guardian of the mysteries, jackal god, I may learn how to help the emergence of the ancient glories of Africa. I find myself thinking, this is more like Aidan's adventures than mine. Now it's my turn. I will cross the threshold. So may the desert flower. I pass through the mighty gateway and my heart jerks uncontrollably. I'm afraid. I put my arms out and expect them to disappear, the swirling colours before me. Instead I feel a flow of spiritual energy flow right through my body like water. I pass through. I make my way through endless corridors, and at each gateway I find I shed my earthly worries. I try to shed my earthly anger. My anger is social injustice, to remember evil, to fight, my fear of deception. I find I'm embarrassed. I've, I'm naked. I've shed every bit of clothing. But it's all right. My body is made of shining coils of energy. I feel myself thinking I look like someone out of an A.E. or a William Beck painting. He always did them naked. I'm not a weak, fluffy ghost. Not transparent light. I'm very strong and vital. My real self. I hear the sound of a mighty waterfall. The sort I've seen photos of. The Victoria Falls. Somehow I go through the falling water, and the last shred of embarrassment at nudity vanishes. I'm floating over a beautiful still lake, and the still lake reflects a full moon. At last I see the goddess Mart. She is a starry figure hovering over the lake with her outspread wings. I hear her voice, which sounds to me like the floating of waters. My daughter, the spiritual source of the Nile of the stars, comes from this mystic lake, replenished from the mountains of the moon, mirror of Hathor, goddess of love. The waters pour forth from the milky way, milk of the goddess Nuit, mother of Isis and Osiris. See, the lake reflects the full moon. Now watch the rise of the sun of truth, the Aten, that sends rays of light to all. The great ones of Egypt are reborn. I marvel at her words. The mighty figure of a mart, with her outspread wings across the sky, begins to fade into the stars. No longer do I see myriads of suns, but just one little sun ours. Thousands of planets vanish, but I only know our own little planet, the Earth. Beloved of the all, the gods, I return to my family, my friends, my home. I am back with you. Elaine returns from Tarsance, deeply moved, 
and all agree she has earned her degree, climax of years of hard work, and now shares her ecstasy. Reports are shared, and rays of love and truth are sent forth to all. So let us now rejoice at our own rebirth. In truth, all our sorrows, all our problems dissolve when we awaken into our real selves. That's the first step. The second is to acknowledge it in everybody else and everything around us. This is called the crystal skull, and the comment is see through deception, remove the mask. When the Temple of Alchemy, the priest alchemist addresses the twin apprentices, Aidan and Elaine. How to recognize evil without being influenced by it? You need to learn discrimination. Only the good is real. Evil is deception. The ancient people of Maya were versed in this wisdom before they too were led astray by literalism. Let us invoke the divine goddess Maya, once more revealed to us and forgotten by her own people, or most of them, as we enter the fifth sphere or the fifth world of the new aeon. Priestess Alchemist raised her wand. Holy Maya, Queen of Heaven, Goddess of the encircling stars, help us to attain our true selves and face truth free of delusions. We look and we see this goddess figure. She's in orange-colored robes with a, a masked face. We cannot see through the mask. We wait with awe for the oracle. To discover reality, which is all that is, you need to distinguish between the true and the false. Great cultures have created inner mystery schools where devoted priesthoods learn to ascend the pyramid of truth and love, to reach the temple of the heavens. But when these very civilizations become decadent, the priests lead the corruption because of their superior knowledge. Such is this time on your threatened planet. But do not despair. The very time of the death of one sphere of being creates the birth of its successor. Long ago, my holy shamans prophesied the advent of the fifth world of spiritual enlightenment to follow the earlier world of materialistic knowledge. You move from knowledge to life. Now is the time to surrender your fears, your prejudices, your rejection of new ideas. When you surrender all that is useless, greedy, foolish, you make way for planetary rebirth. I have returned to be among those who truly call upon me, for I dwell not only in the starry heavens, but upon every struggling planet on its spiritual path. Come to me. No one is rejected. Those who have practiced most evil may attain divinity along with the saintly, for all share my life. The priest steps forward. We give thanks to the goddess Maya for her oracle. The priestess alchemist addresses Aiden. Aiden, you continually wonder at the existence of evil and how to enjoy perfect happiness while others are suffering. We know you find the culture of the ancient people, the Aztecs and Toltecs, hard to like, so you must face what you most fear. Are you willing to undergo the ordeal of Libra and learn to face the opposite, good, and its reverse? Aiden looks thoughtful. He knows now what these transitions involve. Then he says, it's about time. I can't continue in my interesting adventures without coming back to Earth and its problems. I much prefer to daydream. The priestess alchemist addresses him. First tell me what you think of this card, your passport. She hands him a tarot card of the Marseille deck. Aiden. Oh, no, it would be death, what I most dislike. Well, we mostly do, don't we? 
the weight pack has a noble light on it, obviously heroically coping with the situation. But this card, number 13, of course, shows the Grim Reaper as a hideous skeleton sizing down a king and a woman. Their decapitated heads lie along with hands and feet protruding from the earth. Oh, good art was rather apparent. Well, I must face it. I know you will be with me, but won't help me. With heavy heart, I climb the hill to the Temple of the Zodiac. I enter. The doorway of Libra is not alarming, but it's just as Elaine described. But she didn't notice a, a feathered serpent winding its way beneath the wings of Mark. I'm on my guard as I walk straight through the doorway without hesitation. It's best that way. Jump in quickly. That's the best way. Not to sink. I find myself like a lane in a desert, or rather a desert in the making, as trees are being cut down on the edge of a rainforest. Before me is a South American pyramid that's been ruined by time and tourists. I wish they'd go away. Ah, one of the tourists approaches me. He's a very old, frail man leaning on a staff. He's wearing a frayed shirt and denims and sandals. His staff is carved as a twining snake. They sell a lot of these to tourists, I suppose. He sits down and beckons me to sit beside him. My friend, he said, I'm an unofficial guide to this place. Have you any questions? I don't know what is coming over me, a surge of red furious rage. Yes, I explained, why are these rainforests being cut down and so destroying the earth with the drought? They keep fragments of this horrible civilization alive in museums. What's wrong with your cats? Your appeared cats are drawn with curly smiles. Your drawing shows cat smiles in an inverted V crossed like Hitler, the little black moustaches. Suddenly I'm ashamed. What had come over me? And could this man belong to this place? Don't be embarrassed, friend, he said. I like your description of the cross cats. But as for this word Hitler, this is not a much-hated human being, but a mask. The name was adapted in recent years from an ancient prophecy by those who manipulated it for their own ends. I feel this is a challenge. He knows something. What do you mean by mask, I asked. I will tell you of such a mask put upon the god of fire and storm. He came to his people to bring them strength to resist coming invasion. He called upon their love of country. My dear children, give me your heart. Unfortunately, the priest who distorted his words and commanded the god's followers, give him the hearts taken from the bodies of our enemies, which the executioners proceeded to do, taking their hearts and all their land and their money as well, a cowardly sacrifice of helpless prisoners. Well, I like this man. I see now he has a South American face. He must be the good lot. They were the Mayans, weren't they? Well, the early Mayans, anyway, who did prophecies. We use crystal showstone of your god in my country, I explained, suddenly remembering the British Museum. We caused it to create storms to wreck enemy ships. The showstorm in our museum was very helpful. Like you, we just thought our holy scriptures for our own agenda. And I think that was rather a good one, actually, you know, creating storms to protect our island. It's our island. <clears throat> How can I distinguish truth from lies? Simple, says the old man. People always thought causing simple. Follow the way of pilgrims of old and climb up the pyramid before you. When you reach the summit, you will find your answer through the crystal skull in the temple of truth. This seems different. It's real. I thank him and make up my way to the base. Curious, I'm beginning to feel different. The pyramid looks in better shape than I thought. It looks almost new. To my relief, the sound of tree felling has stopped and the tourists have gone. Oh, good. I climb alone to the sound of a strong wind and distant music like bells. It's a hard climb. At last, breathless, I'm here on the summit. I look around. The view is amazing. I'm surrounded by a vast rainforest. White roofs of buildings show among the trees, and in the distance I see a mighty river flowing into the sea. I turn my attention to the temple. It is a small structure with no ornament. 
to my relief, there are no animal or serpent carvings, I think. I really dislike all these bared teeth and jaguar and serpent figures. Everyone bears their teeth here. I don't see any crystal skull. Is this all deception? Swing round. There is the old man in the doorway. How did he really make up here? He's to a look closer, he says. See through the mask. I can see no mask on him, but then a shiver of fear runs through me. The aged face of the old man is changing to that of a beautiful young man with bared white teeth. He stands, slim and erect, leaning on a staff with a living serpent called round it with mouth open, showing teeth and tongue. By his side is a gigantic jaguar glaring at me with golden eyes, its teeth bare. The young man seems amused by my alarm. He lifts up his staff and straightway both serpent and jaguar close their mouths. He speaks gently. Aiden, know me as Kukul Khan, god of truth and peace. My twin sister Maya is wife to the god of fire and storms. But what of the crystal skull, I asked, still fearful of deception. Look again, says the young man. As I gaze at him, his head changes to that of a crystal skull. His whole body becomes a luminous skeleton. Know me as Quetzalcoatl, he said. My wife is the goddess Quetzalcoatl. Our blue bird, the Quetzal bird of spirit, heralds the coming forth of the fifth world. Know that I have ascended from the abyss of my divine mother, Coatlicu, and from thence, from the very womb of darkness, have risen from the planet Venus to the sun of truth. And still my goddess is with me and shows forth as the sun of love. As he speaks, he becomes a sun shining across the sky, and with him is a sun of the goddess, copper colored. I know these as the two sons of Sirius. I hear a voice, the god's voice, echoing through the sky. Within you is the feathered serpent. And I feel golden power coming up from the base of the pyramid to my heart. A cone of light descends through my head and body. I unite heaven and earth. I feel rage and joy and love. Even as I feel that, I hear an incongruous man's voice saying, what have you to give? It comes from far below. The figures have faded. What is, what, what's, what's happening? Everything, everything's changing. I hear the trees being felled. The rainforest from the river and the sea have gone. I hear chatter of tourists. And I'm seated on a rock looking at a straw hat held out to me by an old man showing two teeth in a wide smile. I fumble in my pocket and drop some coins into the hat. The man rises and, leaning on his staff, makes off towards an old woman in a shawl and wide-brimmed hat with a scarf round it holding it on, sitting by the wayside. She extends a copper-coloured hand and the man drops the coin into it. Who are they? Indeed, I feel I'm reborn. I like this, this world. It has gods and beggars in it. And both are one. And I'm part of it. And I can help by... What have I to give? Well, I help with a few coins. Aid returns from trance and accept his alchemical degree. He's in very good spirits. Reports are shared as usual, and thanks are given to the deities. The company are unusually silent, as if they too have discovered the new world that is coming. Be happy, however difficult, 
because the new world coming is going to be wonderful if you wish to join it. But it does mean throwing out a lot of old rubbish in order to enjoy the star people. For we are the star people.